Yes. So, um, the last time I presented uh, something on stage at an IoT Stockholm event was on the f very first one at uh, the Ziggy Creative Colony offices uh, some three and a half years ago or so. So, um, it's uh, fun to be back. Um, and uh, just uh, briefly a little bit about myself. There's also um, uh, kids, several of them, um, which... Uh, is part of the reason there are less IoT Stockholm events happening, <laughs> or at least as regularly. Um, uh, I now work at a, at a consultancy called uh, Itch, where we do uh, digital innovation, and that's, uh, yeah, lots of different things. Um, and uh, I'd like to talk to you today about uh, a project that is, uh, sometimes I call it the the first truly useful IoT solution that I've built, and uh, it that is um, possibly true. Um, and uh, I'm going to start with giving you a little bit of background to it, and then uh, uh, sort of go through the the technical parts of it. So basically, I live on this uh, island called uh, Tronholmen. It's uh, not so far from here. It's like on the other side of the forest, that way. And um, there are, uh, yeah, so up here is Lidinge. Here is uh, Nora Jurgorn, which is up here. And uh, up here is uh, Stocksund. And uh, there are no cars on this island. All the streets and uh, they're, they're really gravel paths. So we run around there sort of lugging, cycling or lugging our, our uh, bike trailers and things around. And uh, so being in sort of the closest bit of archipelago that uh, Stockholm has um, sort of offers these uh, interesting challenges. So one is logistics and lugging things around. And uh, we have this ferry that stops here and goes to Ropstien. Um, six times a day or so. Uh, and so we have our own boats that we take to uh, all of us. There's maybe 450 people or so living on this island. And we take um, uh, either a rowboat, perhaps across if you work at the university or uh, at KTH, or uh, a rowboat that way, or you take a motorboat to, to Ropsten. And um, if for those of us that whenever you need to go this way, you can't really see it here because I made a poor screenshot, but uh, this is a very short distance. It's barely 100 meters. So it's a very uh, easy uh, easy way to row across to the mainland. And um, uh, a, lot of, a lot of us have uh, rowboats just sort of stationed there waiting for us to, to uh, go across. And um, uh, what happened uh, about a year and a half ago or so, is that uh, uh, there was an initiative to, uh, to uh, instead of everyone having their own boat, we went together and got some boats together as a boat pool. And thus was uh, Tronbots Poolen born, with a couple of rowboats and a couple of pedal boats. Pedal boats turned out to not be perhaps an amazingly great idea, because it's uh, more for sort of leisurely... Uh, uh, transporting yourself around rather than efficient transport to, to get across to the other side, which is usually what you want. But the rowboats are working really well. Um, the challenge, though, as you might have already figured out, is that how do you know that there's actually a boat there waiting for you once you get to the shore? So let's see. Let's say, if we back up a bit, if you if you live here and you have to still walk to there, only to find out that there's no boat there, that would not be so great, because it takes maybe 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and then you might instead want to go down and use your own boat that is parked there, which is a motorboat, which then means, yeah, uh, it's more complicated, you have to start the engine, do all that stuff. So uh, we have used a Facebook group to uh, coordinate, I don't have a picture now, but um, to sort of say, okay, I left three rowboats and two pedal boats on the island shore uh, as a sort of message to other people that come after so that they would know whether there are 
whether there's a chance that there's a boat there or, or not, sort of. Uh, not very reliable, and so this led to people not using it as much as they uh, otherwise would. So, an idea was born. So how can we uh, make this into, like, <laughs> like every good project starts, how can we make this into an IoT project? And... Uh, <laughs> And I actually, so the first iteration was last summer, where I, um, I uh, made an attempt, I have not prepared my props, I made an attempt to uh, uh, put uh, beacons, uh, BLE, Bluetooth beacons, in every, in every boat, um, and then use people's uh, mobile phones to, uh, in the background, update the locations of the boats. Um, this sounded like a very clever clever solution and a clever hack to uh, piggyback on people's mobile phones by just sort of the beacons when you're by the boats the beacons would trigger your mobile phone to sort of recognize how many <laughs> exactly I can just keep going, right? Yeah, so that was the idea, that people wouldn't even have to take their mobile phone out, out of their pockets to uh, start the Facebook app and update the status of the boats. But uh, the beacons would uh, uh, wake up the phone and automatically uh, update, update the website or a service in the cloud somewhere. And uh, I never got this to work. I sort of had the time span of uh, the season. is from like April to... Uh, October, and I, I never managed to get it to work in time. So then, of course, as is now, when the boats are up on the shore, uh, there's some time to think about how to do it for next year. And that's what I did last last winter, and um, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, I was curious about the, the Things Network and how, to, how that could possibly be, be applied. And just to give you a little teaser of what it ended up looking like is this. Just a website that you can make as a, you can put it as a bookmark on your home screen of your mobile phone, and uh, you get the most important thing: a number of boats that are available on. In this case, it's not your side of the shore, but it's one side of the shore, which should enable you to to sort of calculate. Um, yeah, out of eight boats, there's two on the mainland, and uh, this was done through. Um, uh, actually, again, using the beacons, uh, and these are uh, f fine beacons from uh, courtesy of Mio here, who will speak in a bit, and the uh, Ziggy Creative Colony. Um, that's, let me see, yeah, so here is before they were mounted in, in, in the boats, and uh, uh, somewhere here is the, the relay station. So we put up like a relay station, uh, on the mainland that would every once in a while wake up and uh, courtesy of the um, the Bluetooth chip scan for, for beacons, count the number of beacons that had have um, a signal strength over a certain threshold and then uh, wake up the, the LoRa chip to, to send the number of uh, uh, nearby boats to um, yeah, a small sort of hack together gateway while I'm waiting for my uh, the Things Network gateway. Uh, uh, that would then in turn update uh, update the server that showed the number that you saw before. So uh, this hardware is actually built by I have I have lots of people to thank for input and help along the way, um, and this is uh, Grieger in the back who uh, helped with, uh, with the building of the hardware. So it's a battery-powered thing. And then uh, these things are uh, cleverly uh, wired together. Uh, yeah, have you seen this, uh, this technique? Virning? Yes. Yes? I, am, I had never seen it before. Years ago. Exactly. <laughs> so I had never seen it before. I thought there was... A only like jumper wires and soldering and uh, stuff that you could do. So, um, <laughs> I'll tell you later. 
Yes, we will have a special session on the topic of virning with uh, this gentleman here and, and Grege in the uh, after the talks. Two minute lightning talk. Yeah, yeah. yeah? <laughs> Two minute lightning talk. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Um, and then, of course, uh, came the the idea of the um, uh, yeah how how to install it. I'm just going to show you some pictures from how how we um, figured out the correct uh, installation. And of course, it didn't involve several seven people in uh, yellow vests, but it did involve uh, ladders and uh, uh, tape. So so this is our specially designated uh, bit of shore where the boats are located and. Um, yeah, it took some uh, fiddling to to put uh, this relay station in the right, uh, which is a, a Laura One node in the right position, and it ended up actually sort of by chance being in this uh, 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 yeah in this uh, sandbox, which gave a perfect uh, perfect trade off between sort of coverage and not picking up the signals from the other shore on the other side of the water. Um, and then, of course, followed. Yeah, take your pictures, and then we can. Uh, and then, of course, what followed is uh, coverage testing. Uh, yeah, uh, using uh, the mobile technology wagon uh, on the paths of the island to figure out whether I could get good signal between uh, my desk at home and uh, the node. Um, mm, 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 yes, and uh, yeah, I just like to talk a little bit about like the ideas for uh, improvement. The idea for next year is that it's support supposed to be um, uh, th this one required uh, taking down and uh, charging every sort of five to seven days, which was fun in the beginning, but uh, got a bit tedious uh, th towards the end. Um, and uh, hopefully we can uh, figure out a way to make it uh, completely solar uh, solar powered, which should be possible. Um, and uh, yes, I think that's uh, that's about it. And I think we will just uh, <laughs> go to questions or comments. <laughs>